Shut up and sit down. Welcome, everybody, to the Down Forward Punchcast, episode 24. I'm your host, Jason Saris, and this week, it's just me. Don't worry, David and Topher will be back soon. But until then, you and I get to spend some quality time together. This week, I'm going to get into esports, and if it's truly a sport or something else entirely. The topic of discussion comes off of the news that the Olympic Committee is considering adding esports to the 2024 Games in Paris. But before we get to that, I want to thank all of you for watching. Our viewership has been seeing significant growth lately, and all of us here at DFP thank you for that. Please remember to subscribe to the channel while you're here and punch that like button. Doing so really helps us out, and it will ultimately result in better content for you. Anyways, back to the story at hand. This story comes by way of the South China Morning Post, and has also since been picked up by Rolling Stone. In an interview with the SCMP, Thomas Bach, the Olympic Committee president, said that they are considering adding esports to the Olympic Games. There are a couple of reasons for this. First, a number of studies suggest that there is growing indifference that young audiences have for the Olympics as a whole. Additionally, there is an undoubted growing interest in esports. This makes it a natural consideration for the future of the Games. Sound ridiculous? Maybe it shouldn't. China already recognizes esports as a legitimate form of competition and are already going to be adding them to the 2022 Asian Games. Even with this in mind, the Olympics seeing esports as an event still has a number of hurdles to have to overcome. Primarily, the standardization of rules and regulations. What does gaming at an Olympic level look like? How does the competition even work? Is it possible to cheat? Is it as ridiculous as it sounds? Can a gamer be guilty of doping? I mean, these questions may sound silly, but these are legitimate things that the committee has to ask itself before it could possibly grant entry into the games. But I think that there's a bigger problem here. The committee is only considering the inclusion of games that exemplify real life. This would include games like FIFA or potentially something like Madden. In the interview, Bach said, and I quote, we want to promote non-discrimination, non-violence, and peace among people. This doesn't match with the video games which are about violence, explosions, and killing. And there, we have to draw a clear line. Now, I get this sentiment, and I understand why they would take this approach. The only thing is that this in and of itself is going to cause other problems. As I mentioned before, esports is a rapidly growing activity. At the time of this recording, it's already over a half a billion dollar revenue stream yearly and it's going to be more than double that by 2020. Games like Dota 2, League of Legends, Smite, uh, Call of Duty, these are all amongst the largest esports titles. None of these titles have the same kind of real life qualities that the committee is looking for. The question then becomes how are you going to introduce something as an official sport and attempt to grow an audience for it while immediately alienating the largest portion of that sport? and all the athletes that go with it are all disqualified right off the get-go. Not to mention that the Olympics in themselves is about being the paradigm of competition. If that's the case, how are you going to exclude the top competitors from competing in their field? It's been more than 20 years since the first gaming tournament took place. Now, more people watch other people playing video games than they do tuning in for the World Series. It has big name sponsors like Coca Cola and Nissan and Logitech. E esports is a big thing, and some could argue that its emergence in the world's biggest sports showcase is inevitable. But is it truly a sport? To answer this, I think we first have to define what a sport is. This may seem mundane, but I'd be willing to bet that if you asked 100 people, you would get a varied number of responses. I think that we could all agree that a sport has to include some sort of competition. Whether it be competing against another person or against yourself, there has to be a way to define superiority over an opponent. Video games certainly have that. Sports are also activities that require a lot of practice and refinement of skills. Whether formal or informal, there has to be a way to work towards improvement of the activity. 
This is the very nature of participating in a sport, and it goes back to competition. Sports allow you to hone your craft in hopes of declaring yourself the victor against another. This would also be present in gaming. I also believe that a true sport has to have some sort of physical challenge to it. Being of Greek descent, I think back to my ancestors, who were often credited with inventing sports in the first place, and are the reason that the Olympic Games exist, and I try to think about what their intentions were behind them. The Olympics has always been about dedicating and committing your mind and body to your passion and honing your skills to really refine your craft. Athletes who train for the Olympics put themselves through rigorous training in just to prepare for the games themselves. Much to many people's surprise, a lot of pro gamers do the same type of thing. In a TED talk, the CEO of the former esports team, Ember, uh, talked about the, the physical training that they would put themselves through in order to prepare for a tournament. And we're, we're talking things like uh, healthy diets and hiring personal trainers and performing army exercises. I mean, these are things that you would normally associate with your prototypical athlete and not somebody who's sitting with a controller in hand. This really goes to show how far esports has come. Gone are the days of a video gamer being some guy in his mother's basement playing while he's shoving a Twinkie in his face. These are legitimate competitors that that work endlessly and tirelessly to try to get themselves to top physical and mental condition. There's one final key point here that, that we need to make. It, it was only a few years ago that it was practically impossible for the U.S. to host an esports tournament at all. And this was because tournaments are international. Foreign competitors would try to come to the States and would have to seek a visa in order to enter this, the country for the competition. The P1 category of visa is specifically designed to recognize athletes, and not being able to obtain this documentation actually makes it very difficult, if not impossible, for many to participate in a tournament being held in America. Up until a few years ago, the P1 category visa were consistently uh, being denied for people seeking entry into the U.S. to compete in a digital sport. The tides, however, are slowly starting to change as more of these activities are starting to become internationally recognized as a sport. So if the U.S. government, which has been one of the longest deniers of, of esports athletes being an athlete, is finally starting to change their mind on it, isn't it safe to assume that many others are going to be following suit soon? Now, as I mentioned before, Topher was not able to join me today to talk about this. However, I was able to meet up with him briefly to get his thoughts on the matter. Here's what he had to say. First of all, I think 10 years from now, this is going to be a silly question because esports will be completely cemented in reality by then. People will accept them as a real thing. Right now, they are surging in popularity, and they have been for a couple of years. And we still think of esports as like up and coming, but they're here. They're, they have, there's plenty of viewership for esports, live events that are selling out arenas. This is real. This is a real thing. It's not, it's, it's not so much the sport of the future. It's, it is now. It's just that right now, it seems to be just outside of view from the mainstream audience. And that's why we look at it uh, kind of as its own thing, kind of off to the side, be, because the mainstream media hasn't really turned their eye over to it yet. But that will happen um, very soon. E even ESPN has um, aired esports on some of their, I, I don't think necessarily on the main ESPN channel, but definitely on ESPN2 or whatever their sub-channels are called. As for um, the Olympics, this is where it's, um, I'm, I'm kind of of two minds, and it might even sound a little hypocritical, because I, I support the idea of esports becoming widely accepted as a sport, I really do. But does it belong in the Olympics? For me, I'm like I'm not sure, and uh, that might be because I kind of view the Olympics as something that has a, a big focus on the com 
predators needing to really like be in top human form, right? It, it's a competition of physical form and strength and and uh, the training that goes into allowing yourself to compete at that level physically. And esports, you know, it, it's not something that anyone can do. I'm certainly not trying to make that claim. Um, and it does absolutely require skill. It does require training. It does require practice. But it's not necessarily a physical sport um, as as much as, you know, basically any other sport would be considered. So that's the only thing that kind of makes me, a little bit puts me off to having them included in the Olympics. But I'll be honest, if it were to happen, I certainly wouldn't be surprised and I wouldn't, you know, like I wouldn't be mad about it. It, it could happen. I could see it happening. And if that day comes, okay. I, you know, I think that we just got to, it is what it is. I mean, I mean, I think ping pong, table tennis is in the Olympics. So you can definitely make, a, 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 you know, well, actually shooting is too. There's some sort of, isn't there some kind of like rifle shooting in the Olympics? I don't know. So I don't know. See, this is what I mean. My point is completely makes no sense anyway. I'm just as bad as anybody else who looks at esports and goes, Mah! no, that's not good enough. You know, but it's like really, if you think about it, it 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 really is no different from from some of the things that we already see in the Olympics. It would seem that the world is moving towards one that accepts esports as a sport, and I think this is the right call. There's no question that individuals who participate in games at the highest level are putting forth comparable effort, energy, and dedication as people that are more normally associated as athletes. But being a sport does not automatically mean being Olympic worthy, at least not yet. Going back to my point earlier about the types of games that soon may be able to participate in the Olympics, I just think an activity is either a sport or it's not. While I understand the reasoning behind trying to keep esports events family friendly, I believe skipping over the largest, most prominent, most representative form of esports goes against the very competitive nature that embodies what the Olympics is. I don't know if it's the right call or the wrong call to enter them into the Olympics. I can see the argument for it both ways. In my opinion, if the committee is going to allow esports to enter the Olympics, it needs to be done holistically. You can't fragment it just because you don't like one part of the genre. If it's a sport, it's all a sport. Maybe you put those in in the later hours of the night or you time it so this way it's going to have minimal effect on who can watch it. Or maybe you present it in a way that you know, allows you to see part of what the experience is without seeing the violence on there. There has to be some sort of solution because it seems like it, it's counterintuitive to deny these people for participating if you are actually going to say that this activity that they participate in is Olympic worthy. So that's it. That's the episode 24 Short, I know. A little bit different, I know. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Remember again, like this video, subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter, you can do so. I am at Sergio Armani. If you'd like to follow the group, it is at Punch. That's at DWNFWD Punch. And until next time, keep on gaming. <laughs>